This is Body, Brain, and Pain. I'm Erin Babineau. And I'm Michelle Steggy. We are two doctors of physical therapy and orthopedic specialists here to have an approachable and courageous conversation about pain and our bodies that will be forever changing and aging. This podcast is for everyone, not just medical providers. The better you understand pain, the more control you gain. Welcome back, everyone. Erin and Michelle here. Today, we are going to talk about making movement and exercise enjoyable and why this is so important. It's amazing how many benefits there are from exercising and being active humans, and movement is truly medicine. We know it can act as an antidepressant, reduce anxiety, improve cognition and memory, decrease our stress hormones, and that's just some of the benefits that exercise does to our brain. You know, they, we all know of the endless benefits for our physical health, our uh, endless list, and most of us are aware of them, and we'll probably talk about it more later. But <laughs> Yeah, and we actually have research on exercise for depression management. There's one study that showed 30 minutes of cardio or aerobic exercise can act equally as well as a dose of Zoloft, which is commonly prescribed as an antidepressant. And exercise is actually causing chemical changes in your body when you're moving, which is super cool. And that's also changing your body's alarm system. It's really cool. Um, we have talked about exercise as daily meds, and this is a large portion of why we've used that term. It's just really hard in today's society because we don't really view it that way. We've literally been targeted from the media or whatever all sources, um, that it improves our body image and tones our muscles. It's, it's very image based. Yeah. And we all know that person who gets super upset and stressed if they don't track their workout on their watch or their phone or whatever it may be, because they didn't feel like it counted when it didn't get tracked. Totally. And that is, that's not the mindset we want someone to have around exercise. Yes, those things can be super helpful for motivation, but it shouldn't be something that induces stress. Totally. I think we really want to talk today how we should ch- how to change our mental shift around why we exercise. You know, exercise it's sometimes a to-do, but most of the time Hopefully, it's something that brings you joy and is a moment you kind of look forward to, to connect with yourselves or with others. Mm -hmm. I know personally, when I'm trying to exercise in the morning and my alarm's going off before 5 a.m., I wouldn't say I'm necessarily thrilled about getting up, but I've done it enough times that I know how I feel afterwards. And so I know that it's worth it. And, and that's my medication for the day. Totally. It's, it's truly like popping a pill. Like, yeah. again, how do we make that shift where just like you would take your daily medication, um, you're viewing it as this mental and physical health benefit um, that helps you stay healthy, you know, mm-hmm. you know, the physical benefits of managing blood pressure, your cardiovascular health, diabetes if you're diabetic. Um, we've talked about how it changes your alarm system and giving you a you know neurotransmitter or endorphin boost. You know the list is truly endless, and we'll st- keep talking about it on this podcast. <laughs> that is right. Yes, and you know messages throughout the years have been different surrounding exercise and movement. For example, 30 years ago, if if someone had low back pain, doctors were recommending bed rest. They were saying movement is bad, movement is harmful. And now that's pretty much the exact opposite of what we recommend for people. We want them to be doing some light cardio exercise. We call it active rest. So we're modifying activities so that you can stay comfortable, but we're nudging into those exercises, (laughs) movements. Sounds familiar from the last episode, right? very familiar. So you're finding that right dosage that's specific to you and helps you feel really good. Um, Concussion management's the same. We used to like tell people to stay in bed and, 
not move. And now we've found that when we do that, it's actually detrimental. Concussions and energy crisis in our brains. And so getting that endorphin kick is super powerful. Mm -hmm. Um, Total joints are the same. So people who get a new knee or new hip, they're walking on day one because it is that powerful to exercise. For sure. So we do have to acknowledge, though, that everybody doesn't like the same type of movement or exercise. And if you're experiencing pain, it can seem like a huge undertaking and kind of scary to be thinking, okay, I'm still supposed to exercise, but what does that look like? So that's where a PT, again, can be really helpful is is providing that guidance of how to stay active through injury, um, because this isn't common knowledge. But on the topic of joyful movement, there's a really awesome podcast by Rich Roll with Kelly, uh, Dr. Kelly McGonigal. We'll have the link to it in the episode notes, but I would highly recommend it. It's a little long, but I would highly recommend listening to it. They talk a lot about finding joy in movement. And one of my favorite quotes from Dr. McGonigal in the podcast is in regards to people who say they don't like movement or exercise of any kind. And she says that she believes those people just haven't found the right type of movement for them yet. And I think that's super powerful. She acknowledges that also some people only like movement if it has another purpose. So maybe that's community service work. Maybe that's gardening. There's lots of ways to move and everybody's different. And something is better than nothing, you know? Yeah. We talked about this in our last episode. In stressful times or times when we're overwhelmed, which is right now, this whole (laughs) year, 2020. Exactly. Take that pressure off yourself, you know? Find a good amount of movement that's right for you at this moment in time. Um, You know, for example, personal example, um, I usually enjoy lifting and some casual running. Um, I can't even look at my running shoes right now. (laughs) So my partner and I, we are playing Frisbee to move. Um, we literally throw it badly so that we can run. Um, (laughs) or we're just really bad at Frisbee, one of the two, but, um, it it. brings us joy. It's socially distanced so we can invite a friend sometimes. Um, and the goal of us, you know, giving ourselves our daily meds of endorphin kick and connecting with our own bodies and each other. Um, It's corny, but like we will high five at the end and be like, take that brain. Like, yay, we got some meds to our bodies. And um, yeah, it's, it's just that acknowledgement and viewing any movement that brings you joy as a good thing. Definitely. And it's a chemical boost in our brain. Again, we talked about that, but it it can help calm our nervous system. And it's overall good for our body and our brain. And exercise is a lifelong journey. Don't forget that. So it doesn't always look the same. It's going to depend on what else is going on in your life. And that is normal. So it doesn't always have to be the way that, you know, the rest of the world or social media is making exercise look. It's finding what's right for you at this time in your life. Definitely. And it helps you stay consistent with movement and, you know, your mindset around that should be feeling really proud of yourself for any movement you give yourself and giving yourself that credit. And that's where that mantra or self-talk is super important. So, um, you know, we talk about that often with, uh, the people we see in clinic is like, we are all going through different things in life right now. So we're adjusting people's even home programs based on what's happening in life. Absolutely. It's important always to be gentle with yourself, but, you know, especially right now. For sure. Yeah. So if you are someone who hasn't found that love for movement, what are some ways to find that love? I think the biggest thing is is getting creative and being open to new things. And so maybe it's that you're just finding those short movement breaks throughout your work day. Maybe you're setting a reminder on your phone to get up and do a few jumping jacks or whatever it may be. Group exercise can be great because it gives you that chance to connect with other people while you're exercising. And, and I think if you're someone who really says, you know what, I, there's, I don't like movement. I like 
doing things that don't involve movement. Well, what if we can pair something that does bring you joy with movement? So maybe that's meeting someone for coffee or ice cream and walking during that time, or maybe it's adding your favorite music to movement, dance parties. Yes. And the, when we were for load for a little bit, I know I was meeting up with a lot of my PT friends and I know group fitness right now looks a little different because of pandemic. We're doing it yeah. video style, but it was yep. so energizing to have these weird 10, 15 minute dance parties connecting with others and recognizing that that was cardio for the day and that's okay, yeah. you know? And and you the the joy that you feel while you're doing that and after you're doing that is is huge. Yeah. And really again, it's that pairing of exercise can be joyful and yeah. You know, when I end care with some of my people I see in clinic, uh, you know, I always ask them, well, how does movement fit into your life now? What does that look like? Because when they first start seeing me, their goal was probably to have less shoulder, knee, back pain, whatever it was. And for a lot of people, that's changed, which is pretty cool. Yeah. But recognizing then that, you know, what is your goal now? Because <laughs> it's not it's not about that pain anymore, but hopefully it's about taking some daily meds for your physical and mental health and connecting with your body and others. Everyone's a little different, but it's important like we've said this whole time, to recognize the power of exercise and what's going to help keep someone moving throughout their whole life. Yeah. So we joke a lot of like, wait, Erin, this means I have to move forever. And I'm like, <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> we all do. We all do. And it might ebb and flow, like we said, but yeah. Um, how can we keep it flowing? <laughs> yep, exactly. So so what helps you stay motivated to move? We're going to cover in the next episode how movement can actually help us finish our stress response. But find movement that makes you feel joy. Find movement to stay healthy. It's going to deepen our level of self-connection, connection with others. When we remember the right goals, movement is like medicine. I'll often have people put a post-it note on their fridge of their mantra of how they're going to combat pain and why they exercise to keep going. Yeah, I know mine is um, I move to connect with myself, others, and keep my body healthy in this life. Mine is literally (laughs) the same. Yes. I move to stay healthy and I want to stay healthy for years to come. That's awesome. Thank you guys for joining us. Stay joyful and be kind to yourself. Thanks, everyone.